Hey guys, now in this segment of this video today, we got to talk about the soil and, or sorry, more importantly, the substrate that we're going to need for the vivarium right away. It's ready for the next step. So today we're going to talk about all this. Okay, well this vivarium, you guys have seen it getting so, built so far. This is going to basically be a slice, as best as I can recreate, a recreate of a piece of the rainforest. It's not going to be specific to any rainforest, it's just going to be full, full, full of plant life. I'm not intending on putting any animals in here other than a bioactive cleanup crew using some isopods and some springtails. The problem being is the type of plants that we're going to be putting in this environment are going to be from areas that are fairly, let's say, nutrient poor. Okay, so they're mostly going to be epiphyte type things which will be growing on the walls and on the branches and so forth. But the stuff that's going to be growing in the soil does not need a lot of fertilizer. Either they're, they're slow growing, fast growing, doesn't really matter. They're not going to need a lot of fertilizer directly. They'll be able to pull it out from everything else that's going to be in the environment. So I thought it'd be best if we go through all the different medias and stuff that are available here. Maybe give you a little quick little pros and cons about ones or the others. So the bottom layer of this terrarium is actually going to be about two, two inches layer of hydrogen. Hydrogen is this product here. It's, an ex it's a baked, expanded clay pellet. It's very, very lightweight. It retains moisture well, but it's never actually wet to the touch. So it makes for a good base layer that's going to go on the very bottom so that all the extra water from the misting that we're going to add into it, and maybe down the road a waterfall or automatic misting system, any of that stuff, where the water can go and safely collect. Now, above that layer, because a lot of these other medias are finer than, say, the hydrogen, we're going to be putting a layer of window screen. This is just your standard window screen. It works very, very well. It's made out of nylon. And then above that, we're going to be putting a nice good layer of lawnscape fabric. Now, this is the type of fabric that allows water to go through it. So those two layers are going to prevent anything from the substrate going through and mixing with the hydrogen and keeping everything above. Okay? Now, other things that you can use when you're making a nice mix of soils from these type of environments, we're talking tropical forest and stuff like that, there's going to be a lot of different things. It's going to be a very, very loose, a very, very moisture retentive, but not soggy type of media. So we want to have good drainage, but we also want to have good water retention. Okay. So in all the medias here that you see before me, this one here is, is basically expanded lava rock. This is uh, just basically crushed pumice. It's very, very lightweight as well. It can be used in, in a mix if you choose. Uh, it could be actually used as a base layer. Actually, it'll be, it'll be a little bit heavier than this one, but it would actually do the same sort of purposes. It's a very, very airy rock. If you've ever heard about pumice, they use them for cleaning heels and stuff. It's like a grinding stone, but if you throw them in a fish tank, they float. It's a very, very unique type of rock. Another type of example would be perlite. And perlite is a volcanic rock. And this big bag, even though it looks like a big bag, weighs almost nothing. And that is often something you see mixed into different types of potting mixes. Uh, for any of your house plants and your bedding plants and it's very very lightweight and it provides a nice airy mix water can pass through the mix freely other things you can use this is ordinary sand now the challenges with me finding ordinary sand is this does not look like the sand you'd find near my place my place the sands and stuff like that are all uh, very very alkaline they're limestone based so this is a nice neutral garden sand and stuff and this one if you remember back from uh, doing the video on setting up the, the little terrarium for the Cape Sundew. This was that sand that I had to go and try and find. Okay, other things that you're gonna to wanna to put into your mix. This is ordinary baked uh, hard, uh, hard, uh, hardwood charcoal. Charcoal put into a mix is excellent because it acts as a sweetener. It removes toxins out of the substrate. It removes anything that's not needed in the substrate and it sweetens the mix, it keeps it nice and clean. It also acts as a good drainage because it's nice, big and chunky. After that, the next one we have, this is what they often sell in the, in, the, in the stores as reptile bark. This would be a fine to medium grade reptile bark. And I like putting this in the mix because no matter what I'm gonna put in the mix, short of the lava stone or pumice and sand, all of these components are going to break down eventually over time to soil, right? That's what soil becomes. Soil is the breakdown of all these products. So a nice coarse mix will give me good drainage as well, but it's also gonna give me a nice organic mix. Now the other thing going stepping down from that, I'm gonna take a jump up to this one, is this is just ordinary oak leaves. These are dried oak leaves from last year's fall. 
And I use these for feeding all the isopods and everything like that. The isopods are going to be part of the bioactive substrate. These are going to be the cleanup crew within this vivarium. So these things here, I take them and I just basically crush them up, as you guys have seen me do before. And that type of media is excellent for adding into, into the, 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 the biological layers of this environment. Now, two very popular components, sorry, three very popular components. Everybody knows there's a good quality topsoil. I, when I'm using topsoil, I make sure I'm not buying any topsoils that contain any fertilizers whatsoever. I prefer to find a nice organic one. I'm not, I'm not landscaping my yard. So to me, paying a premium for a really good, and I know it's going to be absolutely safe for everything I'm going to be putting in here down the road. Maybe in the future, maybe we'll do some poison dart frogs or something. But anything that's ever going to end up in this vivarium, I want to make sure right from step one that I'm making sure it's safe for everybody. And this is a nice, high-quality completely organic uh, topsoil, a black earth topsoil. Now components that you often see in those mixes, some are excellent, some are not as good. Uh, I don't want any of the ones that obvious, as I said, that have any sort of fertilizers, but any of the ones that have a good quality peat moss to them, this is Canadian peat moss, Canadian sphagnum peat moss. So this is a, a very, very nice for acidifying the mix, making it softer uh, and also making water retention, a bit more rich mix. The other one has actually become very, very popular today is core. And core, you can buy it in a loose form or you can buy it in these type of form and basically it's extruded coconut husk. Core is an excellent, excellent media. It's, it's very, very moisture retentive. It's somewhat pH neutral, so it won't affect anything, but it doesn't break down at all very fast. The only thing that I really, really stress when you're using core, especially in the expanded form, is that you, should, you have to use the expanded form. You're not going to break a chunk of this off and make it soft. It does not crumble by your hand. You have to take this giant thing and throw it in a bucket big enough that it'll take water and then the water will break it up and it'll expand into this giant comp component of loose material. The reason you have to do that is there's often fairly high concentrations of salt within core and salt could be detrimental to your tropical plants and your isopods and on the other cleanup crew amphibians, newts, poison arrow frogs. So that's the one negative about core, but it is an exceptionally long lasting media choice, very similar to components of peat moss, but it does have that one factor that you should rinse it really, really well and leach that salt out of it. And it works after that, you're good to go. I used this for many, many, many years when I was breeding green tree pythons. I was using this type of media and I was using cypress mulch. Cypress mulch is another media that you could use. It's often sold in the stores uh, as a reptile bark type product, but cypress are wet growing trees. They actually grow in marshes where the trees actually grow in the water. And by doing that, the wood actually is very, very long lived in water retentive situations such as a very, very moist vivarium or a reptile cage or so forth. The next step going up the road is mosses. Mosses are exceptionally good for retaining moisture. This is the standard, the best standard in the industry. This is New Zealand long fiber sphagnum moss. Anybody that's ever kept orchids or anything like that, this is the absolute standard of excellence. You can buy what we call sheet moss or forest moss. The real trick with buying this stuff, this is just naturally harvested moss. You could go and get them out of your out of your natural woods and stuff like that. Uh, it works really, really good. It actually does the same sort of purpose. This one will break down a little bit faster. But when you're buying this product, you want to make absolutely certain that you're not buying a product that is dyed. Very often they'll buy these type of products and they, they don't they don't retain their green. They start looking brown. So then they actually dye or paint them. And then they look bright green in the bag. But that could be detrimental to your environment and some of the animals you may house down the road. You can buy, uh, from I, I've seen from the folks at Hagen, you can buy sheet moss, these compressed bricks of this bright green moss. Very, very similar to this sort of stuff, but it's com compressed and it's formed into a very similar to this. You would then have to turn, take this and put this in a five gallon pail of water and you'd probably end up with about two and a half gallons worth of moss. It's gonna, it's gonna explode. The only other thing I have on the table right now is this product right here. 
This is a very, very unique product that is very, very new uh, to the industry. It's always been available. It's just, it's very kind of new to the people. I'm not going to be using this because if this is like a one, two power punch anything, but in a house plant, we will be using this down the road when we do that uh, mudded tank setup, the aquarium that we're going to be using. That's the reason I have that, but I wanted to at least mention it today when we're talking about all the different soil things. This is a soil conditioner that's often sold as green sand. Green sand is gluconite. Gluconite is basically a power punch of minerals. It's actually harvested uh, and mined from the ocean floor. It's got all sorts of powerful minerals and stuff, all micronutrients and trace elements and stuff, but a very, very little goes an absolutely long way. Maybe we'll put a little bit in there because all those micronutrients might be beneficial to the isopods as well, or not really sure. But that's a good introduction to all these different types of soil amendments. Now there are a few, there, I'm sure there's all sorts of other types of medias that can be used. Tree fern, which is not readily available, especially in Canada. I believe tree fern itself is actually listed on CITES. But tree fern root for years, for decades, was the standard of excellence for mounting orchids as well as a soil amendment. You break it up, it's basically rough little twigs type stuff. But the roots of the, of the tree fern plant were exceptional soil amendments. One other thing that I do have, I do have it outside and we may put it in, but it's basically a component that you add to your soil mixes is you can buy now worm castings. And basically that's exactly what they are. They're worm poop. You're buying a really expensive bag of worm poop. But uh, that is a very, very powerful punch that adds a lot of nutrient value to the, to the substrate. And adding too much nutrient in this substrate might be a little bit too rich for the type of plants that are gonna be growing in here. We'll see what we do. Basically, bottom line is we want a nice, rich media that drains very, very well, that retains moisture. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. Take care.